Yes. Uh, capacity planning, uh, how much room do we have to grow? Well, that's, uh, in, the, in the near term, we're at around 1,700 this year. This ship uh, is 1910. Next year's is 1958 at 100% capacity. So it's conceivable that we would sell out next year's. And beyond that, there's, this is sort of the things we're going to be discussing afterwards, because we have to make a decision for 2019 within four or five months. Right? Yeah. Well, we already have to think about 2019. We're playing 3D Spock chess. <laughs> So you move around little spots on different houses? <laughs> I'm going to be 65 in 2019. <laughs> but so much of it depends on what ships are available to us, where, what price to deliver a value. We always want to be as affordable as possible. And there's a limit, I think, to how large we want to go. Because I couldn't even imagine doing a full ship on the Freedom Class ships like we were on before. Just because the feel, it would be way too impersonal. But there are ships that go all the way up to I'd say like the 2,400 passenger size that we, I think we can still deliver something that is Joko Cruise. The, the choke point, at least from a programming standpoint, is how many people can fit in this room, uh, which was, uh, it was a bit of a heart attack because when we came on the site inspection, we did a, a hand count of the chairs in this room and there were 100 fewer than they told us there were, uh, which means uh, we had to go buy a lot of folding chairs real fast. Uh, because at least uh, based on our current programming uh, method of the two shows. Um, there, there are other cruise ship, uh, event cruises who have a different model where the head, big headliners will do three shows and then for a lot of the, the other things they'll do two and then maybe they'll do some smaller shows across the way. Not everybody can necessarily get to see everyone on the big stage, which is an option, but we don't know, at least for now, it's not an option we want to consider unless something really makes it more worthwhile to do that. And that's part of the difficulty with the larger ships, is at this scale, half the ship can fit. Once you get over that 2,400 or so mark, suddenly it's only equipped for a ship of 3,400 to see the thousands. So we'll have to see. Although yeah, I'm sure we'll, we'll, we'll cross this bridge when we come yeah. to it. I mean, you know, at this point, for the next couple of years, this seems like it's going to be the model, is the ship about this size or a little bit larger um, and probably continuing to do programming the way the way we've done it. And, and you know, if we get to the point where we're blowing out the biggest ship at that, you know, that's when maybe it might make sense to do a second cruise. Maybe. 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 Or we got to find a ship where we can build a stage on the deck. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's serious. No, that's, 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 that's the thing. That's the thing. That's that's the thing. thing we're actually time. considering for this year until we found out how much it costs to get a crane to put a stage yeah. on the back of the we ship. Would have, we would have had to rent a crane. Well, <laughs> push them every time in those towns. Yeah. The labor, the labor regulations around the crane were the real deal breaker on yeah, that one. Who are we? I have a question for us. <laughs> yeah. I'm a guy who knows a lot of details. We'll get about the ship. Wait, I, I want to say something about scheduling and capacity planning. Obviously, everyone here does amazing things to make this cruise happen and it's indispensable, but uh, Paul, we. We were really afraid of choke points on the ship, and that was like our major, major fear was that it was going to be too crowded and like the, it was going to feel weird and people would like jam events and there would be crazy lines. Um, and we wanted to make sure that that did not happen. And our solution to that was to um, put it all on a giant list, give it to Paul, and then Paul disappeared and didn't talk to anybody for a month. Um, and I there was, a, there was a whole wall with pictures and yarn. And yeah. <laughs> but, and, and like, and, I think free jazz. I think free jazz flavor. I think basically we sent Paul away and ruined a month of his life, and he just fixed it. I mean, it's been amazing. <laughs> if you uh, if you really want to peek behind the curtain about uh, convention planning, uh, when you go to a con and there's two awesome things happening at the same time that you want to go to both and you can't. To a degree, or to a large degree, that's conscious. And they're not trying to piss you off, they're trying to split the party so that 20,000 people don't try to fit in a 3,000 seat room. Uh, so that was, that's part of why that happens. And I, believe me, I get as frustrated at it as some of you might, but there's a reason for it. And I tried at least to minimize the super awesome conflicts. Uh, but thank you for that, that's not, uh, yeah, I, uh, I, but in truth, I really just, I wrote every event on a piece of paper, I threw it up in the air and just pasted them onto a schedule. <laughs> and then I made you think I was working. I was really just playing Battlefield battle, battle 1. 